Um, welcome to our uh, Sunday morning uh, worship service, uh, Prince of Peace Lutheran Church. We're gl glad you joined us, and I hope you had a nice uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, my family went out on uh, the Whidbey Island and spent uh, three nights with our whole family, so that was very nice. And, uh, and now we're back at Lent. This is the second Sunday of Lent, and, uh, and we are glad you joined us, and we are here uh, to worship the Lord. So let's begin with our, our um, invocation, as we normally do. We gather in the name of the Holy Trinity, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved of the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sin to God our Father, imploring him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said... I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our maker and redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sins together. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, God, you have you given your only Son to die for us. us. Have, have mercy on us, us and for his sake, sake grant us remission of all our sins. sins. By, By your Holy Spirit, Spirit increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, so that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And hear, this, hear these words from the Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy on you and has given his only Son to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all of your sins. Scripture declares, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not shall not see life. For, for to all who, believe, who receive him and who believe in his name, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. All who believe and are baptized will be saved. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Stir, Stir up, up our, our hearts, hearts Lord, Lord, to prepare, prepare the way of your, your only Son. Son. By his, his coming, give us strength in our conflicts, conflicts and shed light on our path through the darkness of this world. Through your, your Son, Son, Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord, Lord, who lives Lord, and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, Spirit one God, now forever. and forever. Amen. Amen. Ten cry. 
Christ prepare the way. Show us in a manger our redemption sign. Bring us to a morning where the promise shines. Lead us on. Advent is a time for God's people to reawaken their longings. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. Where there is division, we long for unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. Where there is hostility, we long for resolution. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. Where there is separation, we long for reunion. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. Today we light two candles. The first candle represents the everlasting hope that has touched our lives in the person of Jesus Christ. In a world of division, brokenness, and uncertainty, the second candle summons our hearts to the one called Prince of Peace. As the light shines, may we embrace and extend the peace of Christ in all that we do and say. Song. Lead us on. The first reading is from an Old Testament prophet in Malachi 3, verses 1 through 4. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old, as, and as in former years. The word of the Lord. The second reading is a letter from Paul in Philippians 1, verses 3 through 11. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy, in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think of this way about all of you because you told me in your heart for all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Jesus Christ. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge 
and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, uh, the third chapter. And beginning at verse uh, 1 through verse 6. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Iteria and Triconitus, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. And so let me talk about that text a, a little bit. And, uh, but before we do, let's ask God's blessing on his word to help us to hear it as we need to hear it and respond as we need to always respond to the word of God. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for uh, your word inspired so many years ago and now re-inspired to our lives through the Holy Spirit. I pray that you would uh, speak to us through this word. Uh, those who are listening, I pray that they would hear uh, what the Lord has said, said to them. Uh, and and uh, I pray that they would respond, uh, as we all should, in faith when we hear your word. Amen. So we are in the season of Advent. Uh, uh, Pastor Phil Lee gave me a, a week off as we had some time with our family. Um, and now this is the second uh, Sunday of Advent. And um, there's a word that describes to me the spiritual focus of Advent. And, and not only spiritual focus, but uh, it's correlating emotional focus. And that is the word anticipation. Um, there's a song uh, called Anticipation uh, that was sung by Carly Simon. It came out in 1971. And then in the mid-70s, I think 1976 or so, the, the Heinz ketchup people uh, thought it would be a good idea to put that song, Anticipation, into a commercial about ketchup. And, um, and in the 70s, it was one of the most recognizable uh, tunes for commercials. Uh, of that era. Apparently, according to them at least, Heinz ketchup is something to be anticipated. Well, I'm not a, I don't feel that strongly about ketchup in any way, but um, I think, as we all do, that there's more, there's more important things to anticipate um, than that. And the one thing that, the only thing that uh, can fulfill our deepest hopes and fill our deepest longings is the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And uh, Advent means uh, it's coming. Uh, this, this is what we celebrate, the coming of the Lord. And his coming should rightly fill us, then, with anticipation. And as he comes to us, we can not only anticipate his personhood among us, but all the good things that the Lord wants to do in our lives through his coming to us. So, so Advent... <clears throat> Is, the word for Advent is anticipation. <clears throat> this is different from the emotional, psychological, but mostly spiritual focus of Lent. During Lent, which will begin uh, March 2nd, uh, in Ash Wednesday, uh, this next year, the attitude should be on repentance. And, and the reason is because the focus of Lent is the cross of Christ, and therefore his reason for dying for our sin that we need to repent of. And I'm, I'm making the comparison because too often through the centuries and in practice within our tradition, within the Lutheran tradition, um, 
Advent it, it sometimes gets turned into a little Lent, a, a mini Lent. And, uh, and while, while repentance is something that we need to do and should do daily, the focus of Advent is not repentance. It is Christ coming to us. We don't go out and bring and do things to bring Jesus to us. Instead, we anticipate his coming, his taking initiative to come to us and do his holy work in our lives. Uh, when explaining the idea that Christ comes to us at Advent, Luther says, Luther emphasized, he says, you do not come to him and bring him to you, lest you boast as though you had received him by your own merit and worthiness. So for Luther, God is the one who begins, God is the one who sustains, God is the one who completes his holy work. And Luther says again, it is not for you to work or begin to be godly. There is no other beginning than that your king comes to you and begins his work in you. This is Advent. The Lord is coming to us. Now, if the Lord uh, speaks to you during Advent, during this season that we're currently in, about your need to repent of some uh, sinful attitude or some sinful behavior, then you need to pay attention to that voice, that, that calling, and respond in confession and uh, prayer and faith in action. Go ahead and repent. You don't have to stop repenting during Advent. But during Advent, please keep, keep your focus on anticipation, on the possibilities of what the Lord's coming into your life will mean for you, the, the, the specific gifts he may bring to you, the, uh, the release and healing from all kinds of bondage uh, to sin that he will give us, that he'll release us from, the peace and the comfort that are in the mail coming toward us because Christ is coming into our lives. It's Advent, and the good news is that Christ in all his fullness is coming to, uh, to us, and that is certainly something to anticipate. So speaking again then of, of Christ's Advent, Christ's coming, uh, we can think of that in three tenses, uh, past, present, future. So first, in the first tense, in the past tense, he came to us into this world in the past through his incarnation into this world. Uh, John says in the first chapter, his first chapter of the gospel, he says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And this is the past tense sense of Advent. He has come already. Um, second will be future. Uh, in the future, Christ will come at the culmination of the age, and he will gather his elect from every nation, all, all those who believe in him. This is the future Advent. And, and, and after this future Advent, there will never be another Advent service again. There will be yet no, no other coming because we will dwell in the very presence of the Lord and we will never leave him and he will never leave us. There will not be another coming after his final coming when we will all be together forever. But then there is another tense. More, other than past and present, there is a present tense, in, in, which is, which, which is co Christ coming to us now. Christ comes to us now, and he wants to bring good things into our lives right now. He wants to speak to us now. And in every now, until the final advent at the end of time, he wants to do this. He wants to come to us. Right now, he comes to us in his word. And so because he comes to us now, and in every, now, every future now, this is something we can also anticipate. So looking at the text, speaking uh, the word of the Lord, speaking the word of God, is John the Baptist. In the text from John 3, or uh, rather Luke 3, uh, John the Baptist is called the, bapti the Baptist, not because uh, he went to a Baptist church. Uh, he was called John the Baptist because that's what he did. He baptized people. He came to proclaim the advent, the coming of the Messiah, who came to save or would come to save his people. 
And for this, was, this was a cause of rejoicing for many people. For centuries in the Old Testament, the prophets had foretold the coming, the advent of a Messiah uh, who would set things right. This person would be anointed by God to bring salvation. There was a lot of anticipation for many years, centuries and centuries, for the coming of the Lord's Messiah. But for, for others, that news or that hope was either irrelevant or nonsense or completely unknown to parts of the world. And it was into this world, in this context, that the Lord spoke to John. And he said, and the text says, in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod, tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of Iturea and Triconitus, and Lysanias, tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. During this, this context, these people, during their times, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. So I think, I think we can safely say um, that, that the men of power listed in this passage here, uh, we're not too excited about the word that was given to John. Caesar in Rome probably didn't hear that word, uh, but it, had he heard the word, he probably couldn't have cared less. At this point, it was probably irrelevant to Pontius Pilate, who probably heard, had heard of, of John because he, he was a national figure at this point. But that would change um, when Pontius Pilate ultimately sentenced Jesus to death. Herod would eventually see John the Baptist as a threat, and, and he had himself, he had John, John the Baptist killed, head on the platter. Um, the high priests Annas and, Annas and Caiaphas were skeptical of John, and even more so of Jesus. Not everyone who hears the word of God uh, ex receives that with a sense of joy and anticipation. But the word of God did not come to Caesar's court, did not come to the Roman governor Pontius Pilate, um, did not come to Herod the king, nor did it come to even the Jewish religious leaders of the time. The word of the Lord came to John, son of Zechariah, where? In the wilderness. And that word said, that the Messiah was about to make himself known. I think that before we can speak a word of the gospel, a word of Christ to anyone else, we have to hear it first for ourselves. In the wilderness, in that place of quietness, where there was no distractions, in a place where John had to depend on the Lord God to survive, much like the people of Israel had to depend on the Lord to survive during their 40 years in the wilderness, just like Jesus during his 40 days being tempted by uh, Satan in the wilderness. He had to depend on the Lord. John was out there depending on the Lord to, 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 to sustain him in everything. That's where John heard the word of the Lord. And I think one of the things that block us from hearing the word of the Lord, other than sin, is that we, we just don't create space in our lives uh, to hear it. Um, there, we're, our lives are filled with too many uh, distractions, especially during this Advent season, but the world sees it, calls it the Christmas season. So during Advent, creating that space for the Lord to speak to us is very, very important. And it's hard to do, we have to admit, uh, because our culture makes that difficult. Our traditional and, frankly, materialistic Christmas robs us of, of any real time to sit in quietness and stillness and dependence and hear what the Lord might be saying to us. By, by our attitudes, by our actions, we'll say, Lord, I don't have time during this season to listen to you. I'm too busy preparing for your coming at Christmas to hear your word. I suppose we could say, why didn't you come at a, bit, at a less busy time? But, um, and so we have to decide 
whether or not we're going to create that space to hear God's word or simply accommodate ourselves <clears throat> to, the, to, to the expectations of society and maybe our own cultural expectations that, that just distract us from hearing the word of the Lord. John had to leave, <laughs> spend some time in the wilderness in order to hear the word of the Lord. Sadly, we are often too influenced by our culture and society than the word of the Lord. But the word of the Lord came to John in the wilderness, that place of quietness and trust. And then the passage says, he, John, went into all the country around the Jordan preaching a baptism of repentance for forgiveness of sins. That is written, as is written in the, in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling <coughs> in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked roads shall become straight, the rough ways smooth, and all the people will see God's salvation. Now, as I said before, the, the theme of what I'm trying to say is that <clears throat> Advent, Advent is for anticipation, um, not so much on repentance, which is the focus of Lent. And here we got John uh, baptizing people in a baptism of repentance. So is John messing up my theme or, or what, what, what uh, Lent is, is supposed to be? as anticipation rather than repentance. Well, let me ex explain that a little bit. When John <clears throat> came, um, when people came to John uh, to be baptized by him, uh, it says in other texts that they, that they confessed their sins and then were baptized. And that's Lent. Confession, repentance, as well as generally what we're supposed to be doing in terms of our discipleship practice every day. But in his preaching, John gave them the gospel of the Lord's coming, of Christ's coming. He told them that God, what God and not we is going to, was going to do. And I'll briefly list that. The, the valleys will be filled in. The mountains and hills made low. Crooked roads will get straightened out. Rough places will be made smooth. And then the Lord's salvation will be made known. These aren't things that we can do. We can't straighten out the roads. We can't mow down the hills. We can't fill in the valleys. Only God can do things like that. And, and with anticipation, we prepare ourselves by expecting and believing what the Lord will do in our lives. John's saying we can't do these things. The Lord will. And in order to anticipate the Lord's coming in order to anticipate God's holy work in our lives. The best attitude, the best uh, spiritual focus that we can have is anticipation about what God is going to do. But still we struggle with faith. Uh, Dallas Willard says, we are hindered in our progress toward becoming spiritually competent people by how, how easily we can explain away the movement of God toward us. We live in a culture that has for centuries now cultivated the idea that the skeptical person is always smarter than the one who believes. You can almost be as stupid as a cabbage as long as you doubt, according to Dallas Willard, whose profession was uh, as a professor at USC of philosophy. Not a, not a stupid uh, cabbage. Anticipation of Christ coming into our lives and all the promises uh, of what he will do with us and in us, all these things, the advent of the Lord is impossible to, to, to anticipate without faith. How do we prepare for the Lord's coming? We believe it. We believe the promise. We believe what's been told us, what we have seen and experienced. And when we believe, our sense of anticipation will grow. Let's not go through then another too busy Advent season, Christmas season, to not hear that word. And let's not go through another Christmas season being so cynical 
that we refuse to believe that his coming will make a difference in our lives this coming year. Anticipate. The Lord is coming. That's how, that's how our, our forefathers and foremothers have, throughout the centuries, anticipated Advent, anticipated the Lord's coming because they believed what the Lord would do, could do, and will do. The Lord's coming to us in the past. He's come to, he will come to us in the future, and, and there'll be no other future advent beyond that. Right now, the Lord comes to us through his word. I hope you've heard that word. I hope we've heard a special word from the Lord this morning. And maybe the Lord will move us in a different way this week upon hearing that word. Amen. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guards your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Let us confess uh, the, uh, our faith in the words of the, the creed that came out of the 4th century, the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He, he will come, come again, again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let's go to a time of, of prayer. Uh, let us 
pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Uh, Let us pray. Lord, during this time of Advent, uh, when we celebrate your coming in its three tenses of past, future, and now, I, I pray, Lord, that, that we would be, have our ears open to, to hear the good news uh, that you have come to us, that you have initiated that relationship, and that you are initiating in us all the wonderful things that you would like to accomplish in our lives uh, through Christ and through Christ on the cross. And I pray that we would hear what you speak to us and, help, and fill us with a sense of anticipation and joy Uh, during this important season of the church. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Uh, uh, We pray for uh, John, who had a a heart procedure, John Reynolds, on uh, Friday. Pray for his full recovery. Pray for uh, Char as she's uh, facing the loss of her sister and grieving that long-term relationship as she passed away about a week ago. Pray for Ardeth and her, her continued health. Pray for Dick and his treatment. Um, pray for Darlene, who has lost sister and is probably uh, recovering and moving on the way home yet. Uh, we pray for Josiah, uh, one of our, our preschool uh, gr- grandkids of our preschool teacher, and I pray for his cancer treatment. We pray those names, Lord, in your name, and, and Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Pray for the ministries of our church, Lord. We pray for all the things that happened specifically during this Advent season, um, the, the, the kids' program and some extra music stuff going on, opportunities to serve the community by giving away uh, food and things like that. We pray that, um, that, that we would be faithful to serve our neighbor during this Advent time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Um, we pray for all those in authority. We pray for Bishop Dan uh, of the North American Lutheran Church and all the pastors in our denomination, all of its lay leaders. We pray for our government, too, from the president on down, that, that you would bless them with godly wisdom uh, to move this country uh, in, in the direction that you want us to go. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Uh, Lord, we lift up uh, Missy, who is anticipating future surgery. We lift up Ron Peters, our disabled employee who is on hospice. We lift up Nicole for her continued healing, Lord. Um, and we pray also as well for Suzanne as she recovers from a broken hip and then a hip replacement. Uh, be with all these people and many more within our church body um, and uh, heal them, comfort them, uh, ha- visit them with a new kind of advent in their lives. And I pray that you would uh, speak to them in a way that is unique to them in their particular situation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And as I do, we'll let some time uh, happen for you at home to to pray, either meditate, pray out loud if you're with a group of people, a family, and then I'll close us uh, in, in just a moment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And to your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And let us pray uh, that model prayer uh, that Jesus taught us, his early disciples, and his his disciples now, uh, called the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Um, Now, the Lord bless you. The Lord uh, keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Um, if you're in part of our church and you're living in this area, uh, and if you need anything, or we, we, uh, please give us a call. Don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we have myself, as well as others, uh, have tried to reach out to people that we don't see yet. Uh, but, but give us a call. 
let us know what you need if you need anything. And, um, and, but but be, be safe, and uh, we pray the Lord's protection be on all of us during this pandemic, and especially when we have this new one coming that we don't know much about. So, so be safe, but be, be at peace. This is a season of peace, a season of anticipation, and let us enter that season with the joy of the coming of the Lord. Amen.